Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about URL parameters in PHP. Now, a URL parameter is basically just a value that we can tack on to the end of one of our URLs, which will essentially pass a value into our PHP program and then we can access it. So I want to show you guys basically how this works and um, what it's doing. So over here, I have a very simple program set up. I have this form over here. The action is site.php. That's the page that I'm currently working on. And then the method is get. And whenever we're using these URL parameters, you always wanna make sure that this says get right there. And actually in the next video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys some more about um, what get actually is doing. Um, and there's actually another method we can use called post. So if you're interested in like exactly what's going on here, check out the next tutorial. But for now, I just want to talk to you guys about these URL parameters. Um, so make sure that get is put over here. And then I basically am just asking the user to enter in their name. So I'm using this text box over here, telling them to enter in their name, and then we have a submit button. And then down here in my PHP, I'm basically just printing out the name onto the browser. So if I come over here, I can use this program. I could just like type in my name, Mike, and when I click submit, my name prints out down there on the page. Very simple. But one thing I wanna show you guys is when I expand my browser window over here, you'll notice that up here it says site.php question mark name is equal to Mike. So essentially what happened was when I submitted that form, the value for name actually got placed inside of our URL. And this is what we would call a URL parameter or a URL variable or a URL value. And basically what this means is this is just the piece of information that we're giving to PHP. So I could come over here and I could change this to like Dave. And now you'll see that the value updates down here. So without having to type in anything, like if I typed in a name up here, Steve, and I click submit, you'll notice that it updates down here and it also updates up here. But if I wanted, I could just bypass this text box altogether and I could pass a value in here like John. And now that's gonna be the value that this page is getting. So up until this point in the course, we've always been getting our information through these text boxes. And that's a very common way to do it. A lot of times you're gonna want your user to interact with the website using things like text boxes or buttons. But other times in our PHP programs, you might wanna give information to your PHP page without having to like make the user do it. So in other words, in certain circumstances, like there might just be certain values that I wanna give in a specific URL and I don't necessarily want the user to have to enter them. And we can use these URL parameters in order to do that. So if I wanna add another URL parameter over here, you'll notice that we say essentially the name of the site then we use this question mark and that sort of delineates these two things. And then over here, I'm basically saying the name of the parameter or the name of the variable and then the value that we're giving to it. If I wanna add another one, I can just say ampersand and now I can do the same thing. So let's say we wanted to pass in like an age. I could say like age is equal to 70. So now in addition to giving this page this name value, I'm also giving it this age value over here with a value of 70. So if I was to come over here and I just like entered this in, you'll notice that like nothing's changing, right? Even though I added that new, you know, parameter up here in the URL, it doesn't really change anything on the page, but inside of our PHP, it's gonna change a lot. So I could actually access this value that got passed in in the URL. So I could come down here and instead of echoing um, the name, I could actually echo the age now. So because we passed in this variable age, I'm able to print out what it was. So instead of printing out the name now, when I enter this, it's gonna print out the age. So you can see we're printing out 70. And if I was to get rid of this up here in the URL, now it's just not gonna print out anything because it didn't receive that value. And this is a really awesome way for us to build these URLs. One of the reasons that this is so useful is because you could have a um, web page that's, you know, has a bunch of values associated with it, and then you could store all of those values in the URL. So a user could actually like bookmark that page and they could go back to that page with all of that same information set for the page. And you know, this doesn't have to be like someone's name or someone's age. I mean, this could be any information that you wanna store on a particular web page. And like I said, because all of it's stored in the URL, uh, users can like bookmark that page and they can have all of that information stored. So a lot of websites will do something like this. For example, if I came over here and I like did a Google search, so if I just searched for 
like dogs, for example. When I hit enter, you'll notice that Google has something similar. So, you know, I don't know exactly what technology Google's using, but you'll see over here, Google has something similar to what we did over there. So they have like this ampersand, they have this little value here, AQS is equal to Chrome, dot, dot, whatever. So Google is doing similar things. Inside the Google URL, there's also information stored just like we had on our URL. So this can be kind of useful. Um, and obviously like, you know, Google's using this for some complex use case. Obviously we're just passing a name, but the concept is the same. We can store information inside of these URLs. Now, here's one of the problems with something like this is that it's not very secure. So all of the information that we pass into this website is basically visible. So if I was to type in like my name over here and I click submit, the name that got passed in is that, you know, it's basically visible and available up here in the URL. And a lot of circumstances, you're going to want it to be visible, like I said, for bookmarking or, or something else. But in other circumstances, you're not going to want the user to be able to, you know, see this information or even be able to modify it. Like I could just modify this piece of information and it's gonna change you know, what happens on my website. For a situation like that, we can actually use another um, form method. So you'll notice up here inside of my form, I have this little method attribute that says get. Um, there's another method called post, which we can use, which will basically do the same thing, but in a more secure fashion. And in the next tutorial, I'm gonna talk to you guys about what that post method can do. And we'll just talk about the differences between get and post. But for now, that's kind of been an explanation of those URL parameters. Um, and those are extremely useful, like I said, um, for any information that you just kind of want to be publicly available. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.